So, hello, we're here with Vinicius. He's the president of Embrator, which is the national tourist board of Brazil. Uh, being very famous this year with, uh, of course, Olympic Games being held there. Um, so, uh, beyond the Olympic Games, um, and with Embrator, the organization celebrating its 50th birthday in a few days, uh, what's, what's the way forward now for, for, for Brazil? I think Brazil has done one, round one of uh, this process of internationalization. I think this sweet sequence of very, very large events uh, since 2007, Pan American Games and then Olympics, America's Cup and then World Cup, and uh, a few other major events like Rio Plus, Plus 20, I mean, look, many, many large events. Uh, and I think with that, Brazil, which uh, was a country um, far away uh, in terms of destinations uh, in the world, uh, I think we came uh, uh, to the limelight. Uh, it was hard because we, unfortunately, we had to face an economic crisis, a political crisis, and prejudice, especially by part of the international press. I didn't consider the fact that this country was going through this crisis, it's an emerging country, uh, a democracy, and in the end, had organized a beautiful World Cup, and then again, beautiful Olympics, and still we had this pressure. Uh, uh, but then again, uh, round one over. Now round two uh, is that we are where we are now. Uh, we need uh, to uh, foster new destinations, invest more, and we are presenting uh, a new plan for Ember 2, 50 years old now, so we need plans, we need 50 we need plans. Yeah. Uh, that's one part of the uh, uh, of the equation. And the other part of the equation is about uh, improvements in uh, doing business in Brazil. Uh, we need uh, to internationalize the economy, meaning uh, uh, pitch forward to international tourists, but also understand that the Brazilian tourists, and there are 200 million travels within Brazil, also wants more in terms of uh, in terms of service in general and quality. Now, 54% uh, of our market in Brazil is from Latin America. So, altogether, it's uh, a pretty viable market for international companies to integrate. So, we are pitching for that too. And we are, uh, at the moment, uh, concentrated on showing the, the Brazilian government that this race for tourism is valid. It's important. We will improve the cities. Uh, you improve uh, culture, gives opportunities to show the world our national beauty, sparks and, 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 and in a sizable uh, way that no other country in the world has to offer. Brazil has size, uh, and this sheer size uh, will guarantee uh, revenues uh, for not only Brazilian companies, but for those who bet in Brazil. It happened in industry, it happened in agri uh, agribusiness, Brazil has become powerhouse in terms of our business. Now, we want to do the same thing in Jersey. Wow, okay, so, I mean, obviously the uh, the previous sports, uh, big sports occasions in Brazil were, were huge on the international stage. Um, uh, what, uh, the, the main one was focused in Rio. How do you think that will help ripple through to the other parts of uh, Brazil in terms of helping their, those places prosper from, from the, the investment? Well, Brazil is nowadays a connected country. Uh, if you take Argentina, for instance, we had flights to Buenos Aires and to Rio and Sao Paulo. Now we have 12 cities in Brazil connected to four major cities in Argentina. And if you look at Chile and if you look at uh, Bogota, Colombia and Peru, the same thing you've seen there, you know, connections with different areas in Brazil. Even if you take TAC, uh, the Portuguese airline TAC, you see 73 flights every week. And to very different places in Brazil. And the same thing is happening with American Airlines, United. Uh, this interconnectivity uh, is, well, it's prone to happen. The world's becoming a smaller and smaller place. Brazil offers experience. Uh, there's too much repetition in terms of tourist products. Uh, we can offer something new. Uh, we have to improve, sorry, invest. Uh, but what we have, is surprise. Uh, surprising elements that we've shown 
do in this large, this major events. So I think we can uh, rip from, from, from this rich uh, culture, this rich environment in the next, next years. And we have examples here. I'll show you Tamponzo, which is new, Paya de in the south, a bit of different areas of Brazil, right in the middle here, Bonito. Yeah, wonderful new places that have been discovered by Brazilians and discovered by foreign people from, from all over the world. So you're talking about new things that Brazil, Brazil has to offer and uh, obviously people, uh, even during the World Cup, <laughs> it was promoted in, uh, in, in a sort of, uh, and, and also the Olympics, promoted in kind of, I guess, stereotype ways like, you know, samba and all this kind of thing, you know, that's, that's what people love Brazil for. But where do you see the new things in, or the surprises of Brazil that people might not recognize the country for? Well, it's a, such a diverse culture. If you remember the opening of the Olympics, you saw some of what you thought was Brazil and Rio, but you saw other things which were not. Uh, uh, when you have this latitude that Brazil has, uh, from the equatorial climates to uh, uh, tropical, subtropical, and temperate climates, you have completely different realities. But I've told you today, the comparison of Rosa in the south, close to Florianópolis, Bonito, right in the middle of the country of Goiás, and then Tracoso in Bahia, you're going uh, 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 through a range of absolutely different realities. And this is just the beginning. If you show this to the world, you say, well, you know, we a few years ago didn't have foreign tourists. They are from zero to 60,000 a year now, and they're going to go over that. Okay? So uh, what we're talking about here is hundreds of different destinations. And what will be uh, the idea of solving this dilemma. Internet, digital. Digital will do the job. Uh, the more we get web semantics up, the more big data is up, the more uh, micro-targeting will be viable. So you, you, you can put together the, uh, the person that is in Helsinki or, or in, in Shanghai that is interested in bird watching right in Bonito where he can go bird watching or whale watching when we come to Praia do Rosa. That's where technology, big data, micro-targeting are going to give opportunity to lots of people. This disruptive economy is going to make the world discover all these places of the face of the earth, which is a wonderful result, good result of the process we call globalization. That's the good one. That's the best one. When you connect people to their interests, and have them travel and have you know, this building of understanding and at the same time bring capital where it's needed and giving results to the demand very specific of the uh, traveler anywhere, anywhere. Well, that's interesting and talking about opening up of, uh, of the world um, the visas situation uh, I was told in uh, during the Olympics and the World Cup um, there was uh, you know, more relaxed in terms of the fact that if you came from countries that previously required visas, uh, they were sort of given a waiver, as it were. I mean, do you, do you see to uh, do you look to progress that, that that sort of approach? Well, Latin American countries don't need visa to Brazil. Europe doesn't need visa. European countries don't need visa to go to Brazil as well. What we did uh, because of the uh, 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 Olympics were, uh, was uh, to um, waive uh, the need of visas from Amer North Americans, Canadians, Australians, and Japanese, and Japan. So what we're doing now, we are proposing to the government, and I think we are successful, uh, another two years of this wave, waving of these visas. So our promotion makes more sense if we promote and we don't have the need of a visa from countries that don't offer any uh, risk, uh, uh, migratory risk. Now, we are discussing uh, also at the uh, for our ministry and with partners like Argentina, uh, opening opening stores China. Uh, the Argentinians, the Argentinians have done a, a, a good move uh, in partnering in partnering with China, and we are analyzing the possibility of flexibilities in the visa system so we can have more Chinese tourists, which are uh, the largest growing population of tourists in the world, and of which we uh, gather not more than 50,000, 55,000 tourists of an universe of 100 and perhaps 10 million uh, outbound tourists in China. 
So I think uh, there's a race here, a race in tourism. It's a dispute, it's a good one, because it improves the qualities of cities, improves the business conditions, uh, improves understanding. And it also produces jobs that structural uh, changes in, with technology in industry won't provide back once the whole economy of the world will get back on its track. Tourism would be the answer, not only for jobs, but would be uh, uh, the answer for the good jobs, uh, not the industrial jobs, the creative part of the economy, which is rising on a work that's becoming uh, uh, a different in its meaning. Tourism, it's not what it used to be. It is much more than it, what it used to be. Well, we look forward to finding out how these initiatives progress. Thank you very much for your time here nice. today at World Travel Market. It's our pleasure to get Brazil known around the world and uh, to be uh, able to offer you experience. I think we're very good at that. Obrigado. Thank you.